Let's learn about the key points related to physical examination of a fistula. Shown in this cartoon is a radiocephalic AV fistula between the radial artery, marked in red, and the cephalic vein, marked in blue. The yellow arrows denote the direction of blood through the fistula, and black arrows point to the site of anastomosis. Remember, as you go more proximally along the vein, away from the anastomosis, you go downstream. Upstream is when you go towards the anastomosis. These terms will be used often in the upcoming videos, so I wanted to clarify the terminology. Now let's take a closer look at a normal AV fistula. Let's start by reviewing three important features of a fistula. Thrill, brewery, and pulsatility. A normal fistula is soft and compressible and has a palpable continuous thrill, as in a vibration or buzz, which indicates uninterrupted flow through it. Remember, thrill equals flow. No flow or low flow, no thrill or weak thrill. When you auscultate a normal fistula, you should hear a low-pitched rumbling brewery with systolic and diastolic components. The thrill and brewery are most prominent at the anastomosis. As you move downstream along the vein, that is, as you go proximally up in the arm, away from the anastomosis, the thrill and brewery should gradually diminish in intensity, but should maintain their character. Let's listen to what a normal brewery sounds like. A high-pitched howling brewery with only a systolic component and loss of diastolic component may indicate stenosis. The entire course of the axis, including the area under the clavicle, should be assessed for an abnormal brewery. Now let's listen to what a howling brewery sounds like. Moving on to the third component, pulsatility. A normal fistula should only be softly pulsatile. Hyperpulsatility indicates downstream resistance. Hyperpulsatility, or a new pulsatility along the vein, suggests the presence of venous outflow stenosis. A hypopulsatile, or flat fistula, may suggest inflow stenosis, which we will learn more about in the upcoming sections. Now that we've assessed a fistula for its thrill, brewery, and pulsatility, Let's learn three simple bedside tests that can help assess inflow and outflow through a fistula, as well as check for accessory veins, that is, side branches coming off of a fistula. Inflow can be assessed using a test called pulse augmentation. As the name suggests, you're trying to augment the pulsatility of a fistula with this test. You do this by manually causing a venous outflow obstruction. Remember, we said a fistula should not be hyperpulsatile unless there is venous outflow obstruction. If you completely occlude a fistula and block venous outflow, it should cause the fistula to plump up and appear hyperpulsatile between your obstructing finger and the anastomosis. Let's call this segment A. This will happen as long as the inflow into the fistula is adequate. If there is an arterial inflow stenosis, the inflow into the fistula is reduced and that decreases the degree of filling or hyperpulsatility of segment A. In other words, there is reduced pulse augmentation of segment A. Based on the amount of augmentation, the severity of inflow stenosis can be gauged. Now, if your fistula is already hyperpulsatile due to a venous outflow stenosis, is this test still useful? In fact, it is. If you're able to augment the already hyperpulsatile segment further with this test, it suggests that the inflow is good and that the venous outflow obstruction is partial and perhaps not severe. If the hyperpulsatile segment does not augment further at all with this test, it suggests severe near-complete venous outflow obstruction. Venous outflow from the fistula can be assessed using the arm elevation test. Unfortunately, this does not work with an AV graft because of the higher level of pressure in a graft compared to a fistula. Let's again look at our radiocephalic fistula to demonstrate the arm elevation test. The vein appears distended and engorged when the forearm is in a dependent position. However, when the forearm is elevated above the level of the heart, the blood from the fistula drains into the central veins, facilitated by gravity, and the fistula appears flat or flaccid. If there is a venous outflow stenosis preventing the blood from draining centrally, the fistula remains distended despite the change in arm position. 
The third bedside test that I want to discuss here is the sequential occlusion test that can be used to look for accessory veins. Accessory veins are veins that shoot off of the main fistula. If large enough in size, typically more than 25% in caliber of the main draining vein, they tend to compete with the fistula for blood. This can cause lower flows through the fistula, poor vein maturation, and early fistula failure. This is a radiocephalic fistula with a prominent accessory vein shooting off of the cephalic vein. Oftentimes, the accessory vein is visible on inspection of a fistula. If it isn't, it can be detected using the sequential occlusion test. This test is similar to the pulse augmentation test, except here we focus not on the hyperpulsatility of the fistula, but rather the disappearance of thrill at the anastomosis. So when you completely occlude the fistula close to the anastomosis, let's call it point A, just as you would do in the pulse augmentation test, you will find that due to interruption in flow that you created, the thrill at the anastomosis disappears. Now move your finger along the cephalic vein downstream to point B. Occluding the fistula at point B past the accessory vein will allow blood to now flow through the large accessory vein even though you continue to occlude the flow through the cephalic vein. Due to flow of blood from the radial artery through the anastomosis and into the accessory vein, the thrill will reemerge at the anastomosis. If you suspect a large accessory vein and have a poorly maturing fistula, Coil embolization of the accessory vein may help.